contrary to popular belief, JavaScript is not always the best solution. Sometimes you can just get away with using languages like HTML and CSS. Wait, are HTML and CSS even languages? I don't know. I don't care. So I just came across this article, you don't need JavaScript for that. And I was kind of blown away with some of the features that are built into the browser in HTML and CSS that I didn't know about that can remove JavaScript from the equation completely if used appropriately. So let's walk through this article and see these five examples. And I want to know for each one, did you know you could do that without JavaScript? Let me know in the comments below. So I think the, the thing that's most important in this intro is this idea of the rule of least power. And the idea is for each problem that you're trying to solve, use the least powerful thing to do it. Now we can debate about semantics of HTML and CSS being languages, programming languages versus JavaScript, whatever. The reality is HTML and CSS are very capable, they're very functional, and they can do a lot. They're very powerful. So let's kind of go through these examples and see what JavaScript can be replaced for. Now, the first thing is a custom toggle switch. I've definitely done this before where you have a button, you handle, you have a click handler for that button. As you click on that, it applies a different class where it's toggled or untoggled or whatever the classes are that you might call it. And then it maybe moves back and forth from left to right. But did you know that you can use a built-in input type of checkbox to do all of that with CSS and not touch JavaScript at all? So he walks through a little bit of the styling in here, basically some basic stuff. And then he references using a before pseudo selector to add the extra bit to this checkbox. So he adds a little circle thing that goes on top of it. Now what's interesting, I didn't know this at all. Form elements along with images are called replaced content. That means they're not really part of HTML, but supplied by the browser, okay? What this means is by default, they don't work with before and after pseudo elements. I had no idea this existed. So to get around that, you apply the appearance of none and this basically tells the browser that you're gonna customize this yourself. This is completely new to me. So with that, then you can combine this with the checked pseudo selector and be able to attach different classes uh, or styles based on that pseudo selector, based on that input being select, selected. So you can uh, set the background of this to green, for example, and then the before element, you could translate that thing over on the X value, which gives you the ability to have this interactive toggle switch all with CSS, no JavaScript. So I think that's pretty cool. You can also add some additional features for uh, focus, visible, focus, et cetera. Really cool. Now this next one kind of blew my mind and this is a native auto suggest. So I actually just did a video where I built a custom global search component on this recent website that I was working at. I'll have a link to the video if you wanna watch that in depth. And every time the user types in, it makes an API request to the backend, to the database to be able to search and get the relevant records. So that is one example of this, but if you have something simpler of data list options that can be defined in just HTML or be queried one time and, and sit there, it has built in searchability into this. So if I start to type, notice it shows me the pop-up of what my options are, and then it filters based on my typing. This is really cool. So the only thing he did was to reference a list inside of the input and then attach that to the data list with the ID of that same thing. And it all just works. You can go and customize and style from there. Now, I think the one reason this wouldn't work is if you actually need to make those JavaScript API calls to your backend because you can't have all your data listed inside of a data list, but you have to figure out that balance for yourself. Now, here's one. I had no idea this existed. There's a color picker just built into HTML or to, yeah, HTML. So on, on this, just using input type of color, again, I had no idea existed. You can go through and click this and it has drag select, it has the eyedropper, it's got this select, you can do RGB or you can do HSL or hex or whatever. And that's a lot of different options for the built-in picker. Now I could see this being something that you really wanna customize yourself. So right now you're having to click into it to get the selector. Maybe you wanna have something like this just displayed directly on the screen. Maybe not, maybe you just need a color picker and you just need to give the user access to be able to do these things, then you can just add input type of color and you're done. Now, the next one is one I've also used JavaScript for, and it's basically just toggling things open and closed. This is something, a basic thing I think that you learn in JavaScript early on, but it's built in with HTML. So using the details tag, and then inside of here having a summary tag, your summary tag is, is what shows in the accordion when it's closed. And then when you open it, you see the rest of the content. So I assume you could just add other paragraphs and buttons and whatever else you want. But uh, it's pretty simple. Details, summary, and then other content. And it handles that for you. You can also set it with a property of open. So that's fine. 
And then uh, you can style it however you want, including styling this little marker over here with the uh, colon colon marker pseudo selector. You can also, ooh, this is cool. You can do this from the open perspective too. So you can change it to see how that little icon changes. That's pretty neat. So I definitely didn't know about this. So here's a really cool one. This is dialogue modals. And it's really cool because this is stuff that we've all built from scratch in the past. You click it, you open it, you maintain state of whether or not it's open. You handle the outside click, you handle the click on the X button, all the things for layouts or for uh, popovers or whatever you want to call them. So the fact that this is built in is pretty neat. So you have a dialogue component. Uh, you put whatever you want inside of that dialogue. And then you have a close button here, which is attached to the form method of dialogue, which basically goes back to close that. Now, this is where Killian cheats a little bit, and this is to handle a button to actually open this thing. So three lines of JavaScript to be able to open this, but no additional logic uh, JavaScript to be able to close it. So you can hit close. You can also hit the escape key, and that works as well. Again, extra logic you would have had to do. Now, the one thing that's missing here, and he addresses this, is the background now is not styled. So usually you add like a blurred background or a dark overlay on the background. If you scroll down, you can find an example where he does that. Uh, let's see. So you get multiple buttons in here. You can also style the backdrop. I think this is one of the most powerful things there is because now this is a legit pop-up and you can change the backdrop filter and you can change the background color, all these things. But that is pretty sweet to be able to do that right there. So not only uh, does he have these five examples, he also gives you a few others that you may be interested in. So native smooth scrolling, this is something I use on all my sites. So smooth or scroll behavior smooth. So if you add a link to uh, to a page and include the ID inside of that to the part of the page you wanna to go to, it'll scroll right down. Or if you just do it uh, in a button that you link down to the rest of the page, it works really nice. Native carousels with scroll snap. I've never tried this, but like a Netflix type thing, I think that's cool. Uh, in view elements, position sticky, I've done that. Uh, not to not to even name the concept of container query, something I haven't played with, but is really, really cool and powerful. And also he takes a look at some of the future masonry layouts, which will be super cool and a few others. So anyway, I thought this was really interesting. I'm curious if everyone else knew that you could do all of those things without JavaScript. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, but I want to give one additional shout out to kill in. He created polypane app, which is my favorite browser for testing accessibility and for uh, thumbnail previews or uh, social card previews for Twitter and Facebook, etc. All that stuff's built into the browser. It's really awesome. You can try it for a week or two, I think, on the free plan or on the free trial, and then you can pay if you're interested. But I highly, re highly recommend checking it out. Killian is an amazing developer. The site looks great here, but also the browser itself is super nice, and I use it all the time when I'm developing. So go and check it out. Read the article. Let him know if you have any additional comments, questions. Let me know if you have any as well. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time.